good to oh, I told you I'd be back. Back to back reactions. I took a day off, but I'm back. You feel me? And I'm still talking about the shot. I'm still talking about the shot. Now, if you haven't watched my previous reaction to the shot, it's going to be down below. And if you want to, just go ahead and catch up to the rest of the videos I've been posting daily. Been posting daily content. Reactions, vlogs, all that. I got all of it. I'm keeping you entertained. Now, today, I'm going to be talking about the dynamic trio, which is Kevin, Papa, and Jake. Right? Now, I remember, this is my first time ever seeing the characters Papa and Jake, but I remember Kevin from Moonlight. He played the younger version of the young man who had came out the closet. He was, like, getting bullied all the time. He played the real younger version. So, Kevin is definitely in these streets out here acting. Now, this is my first time seeing the characters Papa and Jake. And I just want to say, am I tripping to do Jake look a lot like Russell Simmons? Like, is he related to Ron DMC or something? Like, he looks a lot like Rusty Simmons. I'm not going to lie. But this little trio, everybody got a friend, man. <laughs> These little boys was funny, but I'm just like, how did they, how did at least Kevin, mama not kill him? Kevin was trying that lady every day, every episode. And the older he got, the more he tried her. Now, I ain't going to be too judgmental. I remember myself being an easy child. But she, my mama may say different. My mama may say when I hit puberty, I got a little difficult. But these little boys was going through a lot to be their age. It was like, Jake, big brother Reggie, was responsible for a lot of the hood stuff. A lot of bad company that he kept. And then he had a friend, Kevin, that was raised in a lesbian household with his older sister who pretty much was privileged and was able to get whatever he wanted. And then Papa was just the dude in the middle. He was um raised in a church house. But he was, out of all three of them, Papa was the funniest. He was dead ass the funniest person. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He was funny. Like, he was trying to teach them right and cussing at the same time. So they, all three of them came from kind of three different walks of life. Privilege, church, and the struggle. But they still found the common ground to be friends. I thought like that was beautiful. Like, their loyalty um, amongst one, one another was amazing. Like, they were really ride or die friends. Season one, you saw Kevin and Jake try to keep a lot of secrets from Papa because, in my opinion, I feel like they, th they may have thought that Papa could relate to a lot of stuff they was going through because he was so churchy and... Uh, he knew was to go to church and read your Bible. So when it came to like real world stuff, like when Kevin shot Ronnie, or when Jake started selling drugs and joined the sixty the third, they kept it from Papa because they were like he ain't gonna understand. He gonna judge us, but they really saw that Papa was the one keeping their friendship solid. Papa was the one keeping the friendship solid, in my opinion. He kept all of them like this tight as hell, and he was. He my number two character, Papa. Now, Kevin, I wanted to grab him a few times. This is the first show, first piece of art where I wanted to, like, ham him up. Because, you know, we've all been children. We've all felt like our parents didn't understand. But I felt like he was, in a lot of in a lot of ways, he played ungrateful. Like, you see what your life could be like when you see your friend Jake. You could be selling drugs. You could be exposed to drugs you can be without parents like your dad left your mom and instead of well i think your mom left your dad because she was like uh she came out and was lesbian but you you literally are sheltered and you're in a household with two parents that love you him and his sister's relationship him and his sister's relationship was was pretty neat i ain't gonna lie but jake love for one, a nigga taller than me. That nigga, a nigga tall as hell to be a little boy. And he, he a part of the Dread Nation. So I fucks with him. But that little boy was bad as the hell. Jake was bad as the hell. And it had a lot to do with Red ass. Jake little ass was Jake tall, lanky ass was bad. But that friendship was so beautiful. It was so beautiful and so 
natural. Like, they could be beefing. Because Jake and Kevin stayed beefing. Because Kevin didn't agree with Jake selling drugs, joining the 63rd. Jake didn't agree with Kevin wanting to impress the little rich white kids and falling for the little bougie girl. Or they made fun of him when he liked the Maisha because she was, you know, she was different. And they fell out, and Papa always brought them back together, let them know we're friends at the end of the day. These little boys' loyalty was amongst each other. Kevin came to Jake like, this dude who killed Coogie, he trying to kill me. I need a piece. Jake went in Red's room, stole that piece for his friend. He upped the file running to protect himself, and they all kept it a secret like ain't nothing happened. Like, this little boy really thought he had killed somebody and went home and played video games with his friends. Like, what the, what the hell is, what the hell are these kids being exposed to? But... The dynamic of the friendship was probably one of my favorite things on the show because it felt so organic. And even though I didn't really like what they were being exposed to as children, I would, I definitely appreciated their friendship over anything. Like, Papa and Kevin does not come from the same background as Jake, but if Jake was in trouble, they was there. And vice versa. When it was time to go fight, Papa literally said, y'all know I can't fight. But he still went because it was his friends. You know what I'm saying? So, I hope that, I think we're on season three. I'm on season three. I think they're still in middle school. They, they tall as hell. They is in middle school. They're some tall ass middle schoolers. But, none of the kids was fingering girls, having sex, smoking weed, shooting niggas. They had lived a full life in middle school. Like, a full life. I really liked how the, the shy portrayed their friendship. It was, it was, it was beautiful. They, their overall friendship. Nextly, lastly, we're going to be talking about Jada. Now, Jada is Emmett's mom, as I previously stated in the video before this. And... I feel like a lot of women, unfortunately, can relate to Jada. You remember being young, and you fell for this guy who was charming. He was kind of like a little bad guy. He was your first. He was your first everything. And he promised you all this stuff. He promised you forever. He probably promised you you were the one. And he didn't see nobody else other than you. And, yeah, have a kid, and he leaves you. And now you're stuck, and you're norm normally... If you um keep the child, you're just harboring the feelings. You know what I'm saying? And for some reason, when the, when the other parent ain't no good, they look a lot like the parent. Like, Emma looked a lot like his dad. So I know every day she was reminded of that hurt that Darnell gave her. You know? I was definitely raised by a single mom. And I saw, now that I look back on it now, because as a child... I couldn't recognize how hard it was because my mom, she camouflaged it really, really well. So, now that I'm older, I can see how hard it could be because raising a child is not easy, you know. It's a lot. You're, you're, you're responsible for a whole human, and depending on how you raise them, it has a lot to do with how they're going to be in this world. So, you saw Jada kind of being very much an enabler when it came to Emmett. He was on baby mama number three, still living on her roof, no rent, no high school diploma or nothing. So, when EJ came and he finally, she finally put her foot down with Emmett, it was harsh at first until I kind of, it was harsh until I realized he had three baby mamas. And I was like, oh, okay. But she was always trying to be his crutch. And I felt like she was only doing that because she felt like she was all Emmett had. So, a deadbeat parent can lead another parent to be an enabler. Because you don't want to turn your back on your child because you feel like I'm all this this child has. I can't turn my back on them. I can't leave them because of all they have. It's tough. It seemed tough. Jada did the best that she could do. You know, she kind of put her life into her work as a nurse. And she kind of gave up on love, at least for season one. 
season two, you saw her and Darnell reconcile. Like, why did she even give him time today? She you saw him and Darnell reconcile. You saw him run and try to make something happen. Then you saw her end up with the um, Hispanic guy. So she's she's figuring out herself. The more the show goes on, the more you learn about Jada. I'm sure a lot of women can see a lot of themselves in Jada. But you can't blame yourself for a parent being absent. You can't. And ladies, it's your body. So the moment you decide to keep that child is your decision. You know? Um, I appreciate for Emmett later on trying to break the cycle, but it's just crazy that a child can be raised in a single parent household, see how hard it was for their mother or their father, and do the same thing to another woman or man. It's it's just crazy. I don't understand it. Definitely, definitely break the cycle of this baby mama, baby daddy stuff, man. Let's make some more marriages because her and Emmett. And their dynamic, it really shows you what a broken household can be like with an absent parent, whether it was the mother or the father. But she she held it down. You know, she finally put her foot down with Emmy. I was like, okay, you know, you can't blame her for being his crutch because she kind of probably felt like that was she was all that that boy had, you know. But shout out to all the Jaders out there, man. Y'all are strong women. Y'all are strong women and strong men because there's some single dads out there, too. Y'all are strong. The strongest people on this damn earth. I don't care what nobody say. Thank you for tuning in to another reaction with your girl, Diamond. Subscribe for more content. Hit the post notification bell so that you know whenever I upload. Like and comment what else you want me to see, what else you want me to react to. There's way more characters on the shot, but I'm definitely going to be, you know, catch you up with the rest of the characters is that many of them left but comment down below what else you guys want to see on this channel man thank you for tuning in